guys thank you so much for um yeah, chris actually thank you again for being here and for um pulling in your best friend is that yeah, right do you, do that's you agree correct. that's correct <laughs> all right uh, how about you look at that camera and introduce yourself hello everybody i'm jacob robeck I'm 18 years old and I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree at Citrus College. Okay, I thought you the next thing you were going to say, and you're single. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'm not single. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, one of the topics we can talk about. But um, let's first talk about the first thing you mentioned. Why did we bring Jacob to, to this uh, podcast? I told him how I was in the past podcast and he's like, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be... Because Andre is one of my favorite dudes. I wanted to be in his video. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. Okay. So just like Chris, we're going to talk about your career, education, um, finances, mm -hmm. and then relationships. Okay. We'll, we'll save the best for last. Okay. Copy. Copy. All right. Okay. So you mentioned something earlier about your education. Mm -hmm. um, elaborate on that. Well, I'm currently going to be a uh, second year pretty soon at citrus major is biology okay um gonna probably transfer to uc riverside okay following the agreement but i'm also um just finished up my emt class nice passed my national exam Very and nice. soon to apply to different agencies okay yeah so i have a really good friend probably i would say best friend too uh, who's in paramedic school I, I mentioned this earlier um in the in the previous podcast with chris and he used to work for care ambulance mm. but now again care ambulance got bought uh, AMR. by uh, amr or mccormick i thought it was falc f-a-l-c falc falc that's the one right that's the one okay if i'm wrong just just let You're me know correct. okay and chris by the way just jump in if you have to okay okay make snarky comments whatever <laughs> <laughs> i definitely will with him uh, okay <laughs> okay so you're, you're going to be a sophomore um in citrus college so same school as chris of course how many classes have you guys taken together uh, one two two the bio and what was the other one we took math and yeah bio. Yeah, yeah. So just two classes. Two? Yeah. All right. We've had the same classes before, but we weren't in the classes together. Oh, yeah. okay. Are you guys taking, do you guys know your fall schedule yet? Yes. yes. Are you guys going to be in the same class? Uh, Chem not exactly. We have lecture for chemistry okay. together. Yeah. Same oh, but not lab? Chemistry. No. Mine's on like, the lab's like Monday, Wednesday, lecture's like Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, lecture's harder i would say really? compared to lab oh okay. yeah lab is follow the instructions make sure you do it yeah. so yeah. um this is chemistry first one, semester one second, eleven, semester. So second semester second semester mm -hmm. chemistry I'm taking okay. chemistry right now in the summer oh in the summer yeah how many weeks eight eight weeks six wow seven six to eight how many classes are you taking over the summer one you? yeah one. just okay. that one uh, unlike I don't this guy overload. <laughs> his, is, his is harder though it's in person yeah but at okay. least when i open up my canvas it doesn't show 33 <laughs> assignments due. it's down to 16 now <laughs> down to 16 okay so when i teach summer class i open it week by week so it's not overwhelming for my students you know some mm -hmm. some professors just open the entire six or eight week so it's like everything is due yeah. do this day no, do that this makes day, sense this day. but that was for the week mm -hmm yeah <laughs> what the 16 i think um i only need to actually do four of them because some of them show us incomplete because they're another they're like connected to another website but i have most of them done that's weird More okay than half. okay i think that's the thing about um is it is it an older professor um they're all relatively young i think i've only seen two of them okay since sometimes older professors don't know how to work their canvas or technology in general. So they just put a bunch of stuff in there. So I try not to overwhelm my students. Again, if you guys take my class, I would just probably give you guys an A. What okay. class are you teaching again? Um, right now I'm teaching health science, but Ooh. next semester I'm teaching introduction to genetics. That sounds fun. That does sound also fun. introduction to biology. Okay. 
also health science and anatomy. Ooh, anatomy. Yeah, pretty, so pretty I'm good. teaching all of those. So I should register for your class, right? You should register for my class. At Citrus um, College, right? right? Unfortunately, Citrus College are not looking for adjunct professors in the sciences right now. Mm. I would have applied. It's way closer. So right now I drive, well, not now, but in fall, um, twice a week, I'm going to drive an hour, 15 minutes. Wow. Maybe so. I can't register for your class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so you are going to, or at least your plan is to transfer to UC Riverside. Any other schools besides UC Riverside? I've looked into Santa Barbara, but the transfer agreement, the basics are kind of different. I've already completed a bunch of the basics for UC Riverside. I thought the agreement applies both in multiple UCs and also Cal State's. It could be, it's like more of a baseline, but um, when I looked at the agreement for, uh, sorry, Santa Barbara, it had like statistics instead of calculus. Well, it's, oh. I think it's supplemental. And then in, I know Santa Barbara, you need to take almost like 90% sure you need to take organic chemistry too. More to some schools like UCLA, UC Davis, UCI, they all require organic chemistry. And then Schools like UCR and Cal State, they don't. What major again? Biology. Biology. Biology, both of you. Why don't you just, why don't you two just go to the same uh, university? Make it easier. He's more focused on um, different part of biology. Okay, yeah. so he's he's focused on cancer, the cancer part of biology. Cancer, the, or the, the medical. The cellular level. The cellular level. And you are focused on? Um, I like the the more ecological side of biology the ecological side yeah. okay the Davis. yeah learn agriculture yeah oh. <laughs> okay is, ah. is this the reason why we have uh, the giant tree at the back yeah he chose it he chose it yeah that's <laughs> yeah, true i like the scenery you like Everything the scenery about it <laughs> okay i was thinking of using my biology degree towards um biohazard in firefighting because you need a degree for that oh i was thinking true i guess i guess you can do that um, so you pass your EMT license. Mm -hmm. You're looking for a job right now. I'll try and contact my friend and um, see what I can do. Awesome. You know what's funny? He got his bachelor's in criminal justice. Wow. <laughs> so I don't know how true it is that you need to have a bachelor's in a certain field. Mm -hmm. But if that makes it easier for you, and I think it's a good background to have um, with a career path that you're going to go into firefighting in general but if you want to specialize in certain aspects okay. then it would be more helpful to have that degree what inspired you to go towards that degree biology biology specifically that specific career that you chose as a kid you know i've always loved outdoors and especially the ocean i like the ocean okay um you don't always, want to swim with the dolphins instead yeah uh, i don't like dolphins they're a little bit um peculiar <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> i like turtles more sea turtles okay. i swam with those oh okay with sharks and the sharks i swam with sharks they but not dolphins no, no okay all right and it kind of stuck with me as i grew up and went to school more and more i tried to like see what classes i was most interested in and i know science kind of like felt like the most interesting class to me okay mm -hmm. Specifically in the ecology yeah. and environmental, mm -hmm. but not in, the in cellular. cellular or molecular. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Chris? Chris, do you think, do you like ecological plant diversity, <laughs> all this other stuff? No. So I'm you're, sorry. you I like cellular and molecular a lot more. Yeah, I do like the outdoors, but I don't okay. like ecology. It's very rare that you find someone who likes both. So I also don't like ecology, animals, plant diversity, etc. I mean, I, I got to name that class because mm -hmm. I surround myself with people who love it. And my professor is great. He's super enthusiastic about it. So it, it, it got me pumped and I did really well in the class. She majored in molecular biology, but the research lab that she went into, it focuses on ecology. So she loved both. She wanted an ecological um, research that's focused on the molecular side of things which is super rare. And then now I think she has her PhD. But again, the more, most common thing that I know is someone like us who hates one thing and then likes the other. So what inspired you to, to go to the career that you, you want to do? Oh, me? No, um, Jake. What inspired me? Yeah, what inspired you? My family, mostly. 
<laughs> yeah, they always wanted me me to like help people and stuff. And my grandma, she was a nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like sh- kind of like shadow her as a kid, but I was like really little, and I would go to her with her to work. And I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. Okay. So I enjoyed that, and it just feels like an important thing to do. I like that. Okay, mm-hmm. that's good. So as an EMT, do you know what you'll be doing? Yes. You have a general idea. Mm-hmm. What would it be for those who don't know what EMT? Um, what what they are, what they do, um, and what EMT stands for? Well, first off, EMT, emergency medical technician. Okay. Emergency <laughs> meaning emergency emergency medical technician <laughs> so i'm going to be driving around in the ambulance with a partner we're going to be responding to 911 calls anything from like stomach pain chest pain to traumatic incidents you know car crashes mm-hmm. shootings stabbings acts of violence things like that where people are injured and they need help uh we arrive and our main priority is helping the patient but mostly transporting them as well Okay. Um, the fire fighters usually get on the scene first. They're usually the first contact with the patient, mm-hmm. and we kind of just help them out from there. But we do the main transport. They don't have any kind of transportation. If we need um, advanced life support, um, which we are only capable of basic life support, okay. the paramedics will ride in the back with us in case we need their help. So let's say for a chest pain, depending on what kind of rhythm their heart is in, um, That'll determine if we need the advanced life support versus just basic life support, where it's just a, like a chest pain that is musculoskeletal, which means like, you know, just their bones or like some type of muscle or superficial pain, mostly. The advance comes in, whereas like the actual heart is in like a lethal rhythm. Paramedics can administer more drugs than we can that will help the patient. And... We're kind of just like a an Uber, <laughs> an, Uber <laughs> an Uber for patients. Yeah, <laughs> but like you guys are more than an Uber for patients. Um, so you, you guys transport mm-hmm. um, CPR, mm-hmm. um, administer oxygen. Mm-hmm. Um, what else can you guys do um, or allowed to do? We can help administer their me- medications. Okay such as uh, nitroglycerin okay. for heart pain, chest pain, uh, epinephrine, such for, you know, if they're having an anaphylaxis, so a severe allergic reaction, their throat swelling, you know, they get hives and things like that. That's indicator of severe. Okay. And that's when we would uh, help them with that. But we can't actually give them anything that is not theirs. Unlike paramedics, they can have like extra things that they can give to them without it being theirs. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the patient should already have those yeah. prescription and those drugs mm-hmm. for you to administer them. Mm-hmm. Um, so how much schooling did it take for you to become an EMT or a licensed EMT? About four months of four months. once a week, 10 hours a day. So about 160 hours. Once a week, 10 hours a day. So it's an entire, all pretty much an entire day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. Okay. Ten hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. From ten a.m. to six p.m. Oh. Yeah. We get wow. breaks in between. A, a nice hour lunch break. Okay. So do you take this like on Saturdays during the weekend? Ooh, Wednesday. Wednesday. I was in, the in the middle. That <laughs> was a really fun class. We had. It wasn't like all lecture, but most of it was. The first half of the day was usually lecture. Mm-hmm. Second half of the day, we get to get involved with skills. You know, CPR, splinting, how to administer those medications, mm-hmm. um, practicing our the scene size up, our patient assessment, mm-hmm. all the um, initial things, you know, how to give the oxygen, things like that. Okay. And I liked both aspects. I like learning about the human body and how it works, and I liked helping. Okay. Mm-hmm. So besides the 10-hour classes, mm-hmm. what else do you have to do? Like so, personal experience, so personal you can experience. you can you can see it. Or cl- I'm sorry, not personal experience, but I mean clinical, clinical experience, clinical experience. Right. So on top of the class itself, you're required to do some certain amount of hours of clinical experience that the usually the school provides for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we did two ambulance ride-alongs, about 11-hour okay. shifts. 
Okay. So spent a whole day on the ambulance, shadowing the EMTs, um, getting it as hands-on as possible in order to learn. Um, another two 12-hour shifts in a hospital setting, so like okay. the emergency room. Okay. Uh, mine was specifically at Pomona Hospital in Pomona Valley. Yeah. So you did the ride along with which company? Falk. Falk. Mm -hmm. Did you know? Do you know someone whose name's Ryan? Ryan. Herman. No. No. Okay. Was that your friend? Yeah, that was my best friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I didn't. I didn't mean any. It's I okay. was paired up with the brand new EMT first day and a two month old EMT. Lots of experience. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of hands on. Any interesting calls? They were all interesting to me because, you know, it was like first experience kind of thing. Okay. But nothing on the super traumatic side. It mm -hmm. was like, um, my stomach hurts or my chest is really hurting okay. none of them required uh advanced life support like okay the paramedics to come along so a very important question are you going to give all the materials to chris since he said last time he would want to take emt am i going to give him the material yeah to learn yeah like to learn notes. my notes your notes oh, no. Not gonna exams my quizzes notes. no you let him suffer like that no i will help him a lot oh, you will help yeah. there we go i'm not okay. going to give him the information okay you know, this is a learning process if you don't understand what's going on that's not helping anybody that's that's a real friend right there i can't read his handwriting anyway i can't read his handwriting it's like microscopic <laughs> <laughs> he looks like graffiti or like hieroglyphics <laughs> okay um, on top of the the hours though after that we have to take the national exam okay the national registry emergency medical technician exam mm -hmm. um which is it's like a glorified club basically they make it really hard to get into as well they try to trick you in the questions you go to like it was at a my testing site was at a u.s bank like big building okay so i go on the up the elevator to like the eighth floor going to some little office room and they're like, hi, are you, what tests are you here for? And I'm like, oh, NRMT, because they do like, you know, paramedic tests and other kind of tests like that. They, they like, they, it's really secure. They, they make me put all my things in a locker. They, they pat me down and everything. And then I get to go into the testing site. Wow. Um, I take my test. Um, unfortunately, uh, NDA, I can't, can't tell you anything That's about fine. the That's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's um, fine. The real question is, did you cheat? Of course not. Of course not. No, not in camera. You're not going to say that I'm in camera. I'm proud to say Citrus Community College has 100% passing rate wow. on the NRMT so far. Wow, that's good. So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> I think it's because... Um, Are you expecting someone to fail? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. No, no. If you make it through that class, you're, you're probably going to pass because okay. he, he really over prepares you and the class okay, is good. pretty difficult, I'd say. Oh, which okay. I like because then you're ready. You're, you're prepared. You're ready. I hear stories how from people from other schools come, mm -hmm. and they they were their main focus was mostly on the tra transporting aspect because I guess that's what EMTs do the most. I see. Will we get more into the human body, how all the systems work, you know, what to do in events? It was less on the transport and more of like you could say paramedic level. That's probably more important. Yeah, I would say it to is save more a life it, it rather is. than transporting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, I think it might have prepared me a bit more for a paramedic, mm -hmm. but it feels good to complete like uh, a hard course. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Okay, so let's transition to finances. How much money did it take for you to take the class, um, take the exam, etc.? All of those. Approximate. You know, you have to buy the uniform, the shirt, the pants, the boots, the belt. That could come out to around 100 something. Okay. Then you have to get like some insurance, another 30. Then you have to get tested for like tuberculosis. Oh, yeah. To make sure you get all your vaccines up to date. Because mm -hmm. the hospitals that you're going to be clinically, mm -hmm. clinical trials at are require those things because they don't want anybody coming into their hospital. You gotta get a background check, things like that. The textbooks, you know, hundred dollars, you know, a textbook. Um, the test to take the test to mm -hmm. sign up um, was like a hundred and four dollars. Okay. You can fail and retake it twice, but each time you retake it, you have to pay the fee again, and they make the test harder. 
by the third time, it's extremely hard. Wow. They don't. Wow. So pass it the first time and you'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Pass it the first time. <clears throat> Although I did hear someone who pass, uh, failed twice and did pass it the third time. Okay. Which I think is pretty good, you know, because that's yeah. a hard test. As long as you pass. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So approximately how much did you spend? Plus the class. How much was the class? The class would have been like a thousand dollars. Hold on. It's like 40 bucks a unit. I don't know the exact. A thousand dollars, let's say. A thousand dollars. So plus all of those, your so your subtotal would be. I say like seven hundred to a thousand. Seven hundred to a thousand total. Seven hundred to a thousand yeah. total. Okay. I'm luckily right. on a scholarship, so I did not have That's to good. pay the total amount. That's good. Like just That's the good. Personal items. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. And okay. So let's say you you, not, you have your license, you're applying for jobs. How much do you get get paid per hour? Sixteen dollars an hour. Sixteen dollars yeah. an hour. I think it's actually going to be sixteen dollars and three cents per hour. That's cool. Yeah, um, because it's the minimum wage at, in, in uh, LA County. LA County. Yeah, that's right. Overtime. Sixteen dollars and I, I three cents. Say, we do get paid overtime. True. By okay, so, the hour. By the hour. Explain to us how overtime works. Do you know? I believe it's after your eighth hour, you get paid time and a half. Okay. I don't know beyond that because I don't plan to work the, that much. Okay. Um, the, I do want to try the 24 hour shifts. That'll, that'll be different. I just don't know how it works yet. Okay. But after that eighth hour, it's time and a half. Mm -hmm. And the basic shift is 11 hours. Okay. So that's already three plus hours of, instead of 16, it's like $24. Right. So you are making up that minimum wage because you're working overtime, right? So eight, eight hours, um, you're getting paid $16. And then from your eighth hour to your, let's say, 11th hour, eight, nine, 10, 11. So, so that's three. Eight times 16 is 256, I believe. Six, okay, yeah. Plus 24 times three, which is 72. Right. So that's like three something. Okay. I'll trust you in that. Okay. okay. <laughs> fact, check um, me. fact check you. Um, okay, so 24 hours, if you work 24 hours, again, you're getting paid $16 on your first eight hours. And then your next eight to 12 hours is going to be time and a half. Past the 12 hour is double time. Really? That means you get paid $32 an hour. Wow. You can do that. So, <laughs> I, I want to. Yeah. Watch one 24 hour shift a week. A week, that's while it. I'm still in school. I'm Absolutely. Like, work, oh, work on Saturday and that's it. Yeah. Be yeah. done. Mm -hmm. You sleep. I like that. Sleep on Sunday and then back to school. Back to school. Yeah. Back on the ground. Uh, again, a friend of mine is do um does he's actually doing that when he went to community college and then university and even now, um he actually worked more than one day a week. He was working quite a lot, but it took him a longer time to finish his bachelor's. It took him seven years. Wow. Yeah. Which is again no shame in that. You said he was working how much? Um, probably three to five days. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Between 12 to 24 hour shifts. So, but again, you know, it's, he, he wasn't a hundred percent certain what he wanted to do. Um, so he was doing EMT, but he's not sure if he wanted to go to nursing, firefighter, police academy, or paramedic. So, um, he explored all of that while he was doing um, EMT, because you get to meet police officers, nurses, paramedics, firefighters. So he had all those experience to be 100% certain where he, where, where he wants to go. So, which is a good thing. Yeah. Paramedics, the route to go? That, oh, that's what he chose. So, awesome. yeah. Yeah. So, um, I told him nursing though, mm. because nurses make a lot of a money. A lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing about Paramedics, police officers, and firefighters, though, um, the government takes care of them. So your retirement is going to be really, really nice. And if you have a family, your um, death benefits is going to be really, really nice. So if you die, your family definitely benefits. I don't know so. about that one. It <laughs> <laughs> might benefit financially, but that's just about it. That's true. That's true. Okay, so... Finances. So right now, what do you do for work? I work at Look Dining Cinemas. Look Dining Cinemas. That's right. It sounds very high end when it comes to movie theaters. So what do you do there? You could say it sounds like that. Um, I am essentially a waiter oh, at a movie okay. theater. Okay. I go take people's orders. I they have a little call button they can click, and I 
go to help them. I deliver their food. I will occasionally help out and make some things, mm-hmm. make like get popcorn ready, drinks, shakes, things like that, desserts, whatever it needs to be done, I suppose. Okay. Um, so this is the same movie theater that Chris was working at as a cook. Really? Right? No yeah. way, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I think I've seen you around there. <laughs> you see me around there? <laughs> maybe, just maybe. Um, yeah, I'm the owner, actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can I get a raise? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to make money, though. <laughs> it is an LLC. It is, it is. So, as a waiter at the movie theater, how much do you make? $16 an hour. $16 an hour. <laughs> plus tips. Plus tips. Oh, plus tips. Okay, so in a typical day, so how many hours do you work per week? It's unreliable. Unreliable. In my prime time. Your prime time. Okay. Around thirty. Thirty hours. Around there. Wow, around that's a lot. It well, was in pretty school? fat. Well, Check. in school or not? No, enough. in the summer. In school, I would. Sorry. In school, I would get maybe twenty hours. That's still a lot. I would say it's, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So twenty hours. Let's just say twenty hours since you're in school. Um, how much do you make your check after taxes and all those stuff? Um, how much do you take home on average? Do I take home on yeah. average? Yeah, 20 hours. 20 hours. I haven't actually worked 20 hours in a while. <laughs> okay, 30 hours. 30 hours. At least $1,000. Every two weeks? Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. That's actually nice for someone who is at school and working at the same time. Really, it yeah. is. Yeah. Some people um, don't make a lot of money because when they work, again, they get paid minimum wage, Mm -hmm. but they work maybe on the weekend, so maybe 16 hours, Mm -hmm. and they don't get tips. Yeah, I I feel really grateful for the tips. Yeah, Yeah. $2,000 a month is actually pretty nice. All right, no, that's nice. So here's another question when it comes to your finances. Do you have at least $1,000 in your bank account? No. No? No, no, no. Okay, so my, <laughs> I, it's in my um, my stocks. It's in your stocks. Yeah. Okay, so you have at least a thousand dollars put away. Yes. Okay, that's good. But I would recommend to have at least one thousand dollars in your bank account where you can easily pull out in case of emergency. Case of emergency. Yeah. So always keep that one thousand dollars. I don't expect you to have three to six months of savings. In case of emergency, let's say you hire you at the movie theater, right? Or you don't get any hours for a week or two. Yeah. Then, um, then, you know, I, I, again, since you're still in school, I don't recommend you having the three to six month um, saving. Um, do you still live with your parents? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's one lesson to worry about. So you don't have to worry about rent, um, food, etc. So what is your biggest bill since you still live with your parents besides school? Still the food. Still the food. Uh huh. I okay. like to eat. Okay. Do you eat out a lot? When I have money. When you have money. How much do you usually spend? A couple hundred. A week? A month? Every couple of weeks, I think. Every couple of weeks. Yeah. So about $100 a week. Yeah. It depends on, on okay. the time, I guess. Okay. I forgot to ask Chris about that question too. So how much do you spend? Uh, what is your biggest bill right now? Gas. Oh, gas. gas yeah. Okay. I don't have a car. You don't have a car. I drive them everywhere. Okay, you drive. Okay, yes. so yeah. you're- He doesn't pay me gas money either. Occasionally. Do you at least pay for his food? Occasionally. <laughs> he's like, no. He's just, he's just <laughs> That's saying. because we have the same glasses. I mean, he's not going out of the way or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> his house is only two miles away, but it's, two it's, miles on the it's on the way to school too. Two miles adds up. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so you guys live close to each other and then you guys go to the same school. Yeah. So you, do you guys usually line up your classes? When we can. Yeah, okay. when we can. Because it's convenient for both of us. Like, he gets a ride. And then... Yeah, and he gets... <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Yeah, a companion. A companion. Yeah. <laughs> He's not lonely. Yeah. Did you know you're one of his three friends? Me? Yeah. yeah. One out of... <laughs> I'm one of one. You're a... <laughs> I'm one of one? Yeah. Who I... was your other two friends? Matt and Rick. I was gonna... Yeah. Okay. Maybe one of two. One of two. Okay. So I'm guessing the other two may be more of a 
outside. Professional relationship? We hang out outside of school yeah. and okay. yeah. starting to more often. But, but you yeah. two grew up together. High school. Yeah. We, we met oh, high school. school. Okay. Freshman year. Freshman year. Okay. He didn't like me. I didn't honestly at first. I was like, yeah. Uh, if you if you ask um, Ryan, um, first time I met him, I hated him. He he does this back there where he always slap on the side, and I hate someone touching me. It's like I didn't like it. So me, him, and another friend, we went on a road trip to Idaho, and he kept doing that. And then I told him, if you don't stop right now, my fist is going to fly on your face. And I was really annoyed. I was going to punch him. But at the end of that trip, I think we got really close. He also got mad um, on the way back. And I think releasing all of that stress and worry and getting to know each other, I think it, it really helped us, you know, get close to, closer, closer together. So you didn't like him. Did you like him? Um, you have no opinion. I, I didn't have an opinion, really. I was just, I was also new, like I was transferring from an outside district while mostly everyone else came from like the same district, maybe some of the same middle schools and everything like that. I went to Sierra Madre Middle School and Sierra Madre Elementary and transferred to Doherty High School. Okay. Yeah. So I was just kind of like trying to blend in, I guess. I see. It wasn't in a great job. I was a little bit of a little bit of an annoyance. Annoyance. annoyance okay. everybody. Okay. Pain in the ass, basically. There you go. Okay. All right. Smart Alec. Yeah, he definitely was. I can definitely see that. Definitely was. I can see still that. Is. I uh, still is. A little bit less. I, I kind of try to take it into account other people's feelings now. I see. Do your coworkers like you? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them I, are cool. Chris, what did you not like about him? Like he said, I, I don't know. I feel bad saying it now, but I just found him really annoying. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> it's okay, I get that a lot. Yeah. Not anymore, though. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. A little bit here and there. We we grew together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Jacob, do, do you think yeah. you have a small group of friends then because of your personality? <laughs> you know, I thought I was more of an introvert, um, but now I think it was just that I was really annoying. <laughs> So you're actually an extrovert, <laughs> but yeah. since you're so annoying, you thought you were an introvert. <laughs> you didn't have a lot of friends. Um, well, I was also really shy. You know, okay. I, I didn't talk to anybody first. I let them approach me as well. And then kind of I opened up to them and then I became annoying because I felt comfortable. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You show, you, you, you try to bait them. And then, <laughs> you show, on purpose. On purpose. Um, and then you show your true colors. Yeah. 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 I was always scared of like, oh, what is they going to think about me? Okay. Stuff like that. But yeah, I have a, sm a small group of friends. Okay. How many friends do you think you have? Close friends? Besides Chris. Right now? Mm -hmm. Close friends. I don't know close how friends. to determine that. All right. Close. One of one. <laughs> two. <laughs> Chris. A uh, two. Okay. What's the other person? Uh, do I say their name? You don't have to say their name. I don't think they would care. Okay. Go for it. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Okay. No last names then. That's fine. Okay, so Daniel, um, is he in the same class or? Um, he's government we property. Were, he's government <laughs> property. <laughs> he's government yeah, property. We went to high school together as well. We were like a, a group, a trio. Yeah. Okay. A triangle, you could okay. say. He joined the military, I'm assuming. Yes. That's what you he, meant. He, he's, in, okay. he's stationed. Right. He's, he's in the process right now. Okay. Which, um, which part of the military? Like Marines. Which branch? Marines? Mm -hmm. The few, the proud? Mm -hmm. He's not too bright, I'm assuming. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he, he, uh, he scored a... Actually, they thought he, he could have been an officer, but... Uh, <laughs> he definitely fit to be a Marine. <laughs> hey, he's not in the Army. He's not in the Army. You have to give him something. Uh, he, he's doing... um. Yeah. That's a good thing. Okay. If it messes up. He told me all he has to say is, I followed the manual to the best of my ability. <laughs> That's good. He won't get any trouble. Okay. Guy. No, yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. So, do you, how, when was the last time you guys saw him? Like, almost a year ago. No way. No, no he visited months. after basic. Back in December. It was like January. No way. Yeah. Uh, that was six, the last time we saw him. Shoot. Around six months ago then. Yeah. Wow. When was the next, uh, when's the next time you guys are going to see him? Not for a while. I don't know. We're thinking, I was thinking about visiting him. Yeah, I was talking about that too, but he says that like visiting on base is kind of weird and we'd have to get a hotel. It's, it's like a whole thing. Yeah, but, but like... He says he works like a regular job and gets like the weekends off and stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting. So like he does okay. his military thing as his nine to five and then 
another thing on the side? And it's like, no, um, just like a regular job. Okay. It's not like every day, every day, every day, like basic, I guess. Um, but it's all the way in North of Dakota, I think. Oh, North, North Dakota. North Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. Carolina. Okay, North Carolina. Okay, I mean, North Carolina is pretty nice. I haven't been there, but the pictures look nice. <laughs> um, okay, so what do your parents think of your um, pathway, your career pathway? They're supportive. They're supportive? Yeah, they're supportive of anything okay. that I do. Oh, anything that you do. Yeah, as long That's as good. it's beneficial to myself. You know? That's good. Yeah. Sounds like you have very supportive parents. They're not forcing you to take a certain type of major. They're just happy that you're going to school and yes. actually planning to do something with your life. Okay. I don't know. Mm, some my parents went to some college. Okay. Not all. Okay. And then my sister, my older sister went, and uh-huh. now I'm the second one. Okay. Yeah. So, you, the, um, your older sister did she graduate? She university? graduated from UC Berkeley. Okay. What What was her major? Uh, shoot. Something political. Something political. Social science. Social sciences, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Somewhere in the social sciences that's involved Something politics. Science. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, what does she? Does she? No. Does she yeah. have a job right now? Yeah. What What does she Trader do? Joe's. Trader Joe's. Trader yeah. Joe's. The one here? No, no, in um, Pasadena. No. Oh, further. Okay. Silver Lake. No. Lakewood. Okay. So she works at Trader Joe's Somewhere. right now. Yeah. Um, with her major. Yeah. It's. It's tough out there. It so, is tough out there. So it's fine. It's completely fine. She'll um, get it though. She'll get it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't know what she's applying for. Mm-hmm. Well, she will. But she, she will. will. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's supportive right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. How about your parents? What do they do? Um, my dad, he's worked at Whole Foods for as long as I can remember. The one here? I keep asking. Pasadena. The one here? Pasadena. Pasadena. Yeah, uh, that's the closest one. He's there for the longest time. Um, but he kind of got like promoted. Um, to like team leader or whatever. And then he got transferred kind of um, over to L- Los Angeles. Okay. So he has to go all the way to- That's a further drive. Yeah, oh, we don't even have a car. Uh, That's a further- um, Metro. Metro, yeah. yeah. Um, he's training someone to be his boss basically, I think, last time I heard. <laughs> he could okay. probably do the position himself, I think though. But I, don't know, but I don't know yeah. what's going on. Yeah with that management situation. But my mom, she's she also used to work at Whole Foods for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Um, but she quit recently. She works at a Montessori preschool. Okay. As like a teaching assistant? I don't know. The one in Arcadia? It's in Alhambra. Alhambra, okay. Um, I keep she, thinking everything's local. The one right there? <laughs> the one right here? so far away. <laughs> okay. Um, she's trying to start up um, a Reiki business. I don't know what that is. It's like spiritual healing kind of thing, I believe. Um, she's trying to start an LLC. Okay. And make her own com- company, but not only Reiki, but like supplements and things like that. That's kind not an easy thing. Overall health kind of shop, I guess. Uh, that's so, not an easy thing. Wow. Promote it. Promote. Yeah, there we go. The Golden Nautilus. Oh, that's what it's yeah, called. I think so. so, do you think that college is an opportunity for you? Since it seems like your parents didn't have any higher education, uh, you said some higher education. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think this was an advantage to you or a disadvantage to you going through college? Uh, well, I'd say I wasn't at such a disadvantage um, going into it that maybe other people might experience. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, it hasn't been super difficult to like get into it and understand things, how they work. I asked my, when I started registering first, I asked my sister for help since she graduated from UC Berkeley and she helped me out a bit, plan my path like broadly, um, just to start off, you know, I get see assist.org. Um, just understanding how it works and things like that. That's good. Yeah. So for people out there who are thinking, oh, should I go to college or should I not go to college? What would you tell them? What would I tell them? Yeah. 
Well, first I would ask them, what do you want to do? You know, what's your goal? Because not college isn't for everybody, definitely, depending on what your goal is. Like, do you really need a college degree or do you need just some knowledge that might help you along the way? Because a lot of jobs I hear, you can kind of get knowledge by just being in the business. I don't know. For me, when growing up, it was like, got to go to college, got to go to college. Um, I wasn't really told about other options. Mm. Um, just that, like, uh, you should go to college because that's where you learn. And that's how you're going to be successful. But, you know, there's more than one way to be successful. So you just got to figure out what you want to do and if college is the best um, the best way for you, best route. Okay, so you, you would suggest to someone to try and figure out what you want to do first. Yeah, okay. I mean, obviously that's a big, that's, that's a big, that's question, a big question, question, right? Because when you're like 18 or 17, you're like, um, what do I want to do? yeah, it's like, oh, I want to become this, well, but you're not really certain. Right, figure out what you're interested in, pursue that as far as you can. If you feel like in any way that uh, this isn't for me, try something else. If you have to go to college to learn more about that and you go to college and you're like, why did I come here? That's still an answer. Like you didn't go there for no reason. You figured out that you didn't want to do that. And you're not like questioning that still, you know, like, oh, this is not for me or even better, you know, this is for me. It's, it might put you back a little financially, but still a good option. And there are scholarships and grants. Right now, I'm kind of um, going to school to tuition free at community college. That's good. Yeah, for two years, I believe they cover me mm -hmm. for being a first time student. The caveat is you have to transfer to a four year. Which, again, the degree that you're or the career path you're looking towards mm -hmm. requires you to actually go get a bachelor's anyways, mm -hmm. right? So that is a plus. That's a plus. That's a plus. Yeah. And even Chris. So um, the career goal that Chris want, uh, you know, the career path that he chose requires him to finish a four year degree and even go above and beyond that. So do you think someone who doesn't know what they want to do they should start at a community college rather than a university since it's a cheaper option rather than wasting so much money what, uh, what do you think definitely i'd say yeah. um for me i only know the the one scenario i don't know what the benefits are from starting at a university i know that um community college is a lot cheaper and you can get a lot of even more greater knowledge at community college because you have all types of people there, mm -hmm. not just um, first time students. I feel a lot of people that, you know, at universities, well, everyone else is going there first time as you, right? And then maybe making their way up. You could have some transfers, but there might not be as much as there is first time. Mm -hmm. But at community college, you got all types of people you can learn from. You tell them, they'll tell you about their life and they might give you advice. Um, I feel like it's a better way to branch out at community college. And I completely agree with that. So I actually went to community college. Um, I spent three years in community college. Um, That's again, fine. Yeah, it's completely fine. fine. Initially, I wanted to do music. I love music. And now, uh, who does it? I play the drums. Oh, you too? Okay. Casually. How about you, Chris? Do you play any instruments? I used to. I don't anymore. <laughs> you don't know you I also like was thinking of going into music, but mm -hmm. I, I dropped that. So initially I was a music major and before going to community college, I actually got accepted to multiple universities with partial scholarships, but my parents did not like that. So I went to community college and I was a bio major, but I was taking a lot of music courses. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wow. Um, and community college definitely open up a few options for me. Um, I also thought about how much money will I be making after I get the degree. And I thought that's one of the things that are important. And I still think 
that is one of the things that are important. If you choose a major, you might want to think about is there going to be a job on the other side and is it going to be um, worth it if I finish a four year degree and I spend X amount of money and am I going to basically get a really good ROI, a return of investment. So that was one of the things that I looked into and being a music major, it could be lucrative if you're in the top 1%, right? If you are um, an artist, right? If you are out there, you are making millions of dollars per year. But for the 99% of the music majors, it's not, not a good ROI, basically. Um, so I went with sciences. So I enjoyed sciences, which I didn't know that I actually like sciences. In high school and in college, I actually enjoyed it. Um, so like one of the things that you said, um, try to figure out what you're interested in and what you enjoy and go with that and see where it leads you. And I actually didn't think about, I didn't think it would lead me to the career I'm at right now and also teaching and mentoring. Um, but I, it's been an interesting journey starting at a community college, especially coming from high school, where my study habits in high school and in college are completely different. It definitely changed. It's like, oh, okay, I can't just attend class, not study, and pass. <laughs> you actually have to do some work. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. well, one of the things I, just, I underestimated. I just thought, like, you're in high school, and, you know, you might not be like a great student, mm -hmm. but when you get to college, it's kind of like a reset. You have another opportunity to present yourself, yeah. work as hard as you can, because maybe you didn't get into that four-year university. Mm -hmm. But I mean, right now we're talking about how great community college is. Yeah. Um, but show yourself there, and you can transfer. Yeah. And if you are struggling on your first couple semesters in community college or even university, I want to say that it's okay. That's just all, it's fine. It's completely fine because you are trying to figure out how it works. Um, time management is very important um, and putting the hard work into studying is really important. As long as in the progression you show that you're improving, I think that's what's really important. Since you're in a relationship, do you think that's going to distract you from your goal? Educational me from my goal? Educational and career goal. Do I think I'm going to be more inclined to change my goal? Is what you're saying? Not change, um, but it would take time away from what's important to you. Your career, mm. being friends with Chris. He's been slacking. <laughs> He's been slacking. Hey. Nah. <laughs> Chris knows that I love him very much. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> and I appreciate him. Mm -hmm. so, so do I think it's going to be taking time away from my things that are important to me? Mm -hmm. No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So do you think you just need a better, a better time? Is this person, does this person have the same major as you guys? No. No. What's her major? Uh, English. English. Okay. She'd be helpful. <laughs> I need that, actually. Writing the lab reports. Writing the lab yeah. reports. <laughs> okay. So for someone who's in high school or just starting college, yes. what number one advice would you give them? You know, my stuff is my first year of college. You're entering your second year, so you're more yeah. experienced. I did, yeah. Number one advice. Mm -hmm. I did have my sister who personally went through it. Um, college counselors, I actually, it's gonna sound bad, but I've never been to one. That's okay. I told this, I told Chris this. It's like your, your college counselors sometimes don't know what they're doing. Um, they just get your I get you plan. Mm -hmm. And they just follow that. That's what I did. But they don't know what your goals are. Right. And they don't know what's best for you. Yeah, they have, who knows how many students they have to deal with this. They don't have time to personally invest in every single one of them. Correct. Find someone, try to find someone who's 
personally invested in you. Like Andre. Like me. Andre. And um, thank you guys for that. And again, if you guys need some mentoring, I am um, currently open to mentoring new students. Um, right now, I'm a little free when it comes to mentoring students. Um, and again, it will not cost you anything. So before I even start charging for mentorship, make sure you guys take advantage of that. I'm going to have my contact down below. So make sure you guys reach out.